Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now, almost exactly a year ago, Jamie and I posted a video to the channel all about the Michelin Tracker. In fact, that video was about these exact Michelin Trackers, the ones still fitted to the rally that I've got here. So we've run them for exactly 12 months now. And I think that puts me in a really good space to update you about the tire, what we've liked, what we've not liked as much, and exactly how they've worn. So with that, let's jump straight in getting into the update. All right then, so let's jump into the update. If you haven't watched the original video, go back and have a look at it. I'll post the link up here somewhere because that sets out the premise for when we swapped the tires. We swapped them from the stock IRC to the Michelin trackers. And in that time between, we haven't tried any other tire. So it'd be pointless for me to compare it to any other brand of tire. So I shan't do that. Now in the original video, I said, having only ridden on them for 20 or 30 miles, that the difference between the stock IRC and these was night and day. And you know what, I'll still reiterate that one. These are a massive, massive upgrade to the IRC in my experience. Now I've got a little confession to make in that the IRCs fitted to this bike when I bought it were only 1,000 miles old, so barely run, but they were also 12 months old because the original owner had, fitted, had bought the bike with them fitted and then barely ridden it. So there's every chance that the compound could have hardened off in that time. And I didn't mention that in the original video simply because I didn't think of it at the time. So when I say they were clogging up when we went round the Welsh Tet and they let loose on the road once, actually quite significantly, in hindsight, it could have been because the compound has hardened because Jamie on the stock IRCs hadn't experienced that at the time. But regardless, going from those tires that I had in particular fitted to this, to the tracker was night and day. And it still is. And even more so over that 12 month period that I've had them now, I can ride this bike with absolute confidence. So with all that in mind, let's give you a bit of the technical update then. At the time of the original video, they were only 30 miles old and I told you that they tracked the imperfections on the road, but I was still figuring out the PSI. Well, I've gone and figured out the PSI that I want to run with these tires and I routinely run anywhere between 18 and 22 PSI. Being that we've ridden these on, we've now ridden these in um, the Lake District, the Peak District and around the Pennines. So we've covered all range of terrains at all times of the year. And not once have we felt the tires have let us down. They've been absolutely brilliant. Another big benefit of these is on rocky terrain, they just seem to flex and find that grip wherever you want. And we really noticed this up in the Lake District. Not once did they lose traction, slip, or let us down in any respect. The one terrain which I've been most impressed in, off-road of course, is wet grass. And I know this is notoriously a difficult terrain for any tire to grip in, but actually, these seem to cope really, really well with it. Of course, they feel somewhat looser than on, you know, gravelly roads or rock perhaps, but they do really inspire confidence. And I remember saying that a year ago, their, their confidence is firing, and I still find that today. One or other aspect of these tires that we really should talk about are their road manners. And this is something that a lot of people don't really talk about when they're talking about an off-road bias or an adventure tire. But it's hugely important, especially here in the UK, to get to anywhere uh, with the green lanes, you typically have to ride the roads. And for Jamie and I who go on adventures with our bike, actually we sit on the motorways for a couple of hours with these, these tires sometimes. So I think it's really worth mentioning. And actually the road manners of these tires is really impressive. Like I say, you can cruise at 70 miles an hour on the motorway with these tires you don't really know that you're on an off-road tire whatsoever. Okay, the noise is a little bit more increased, but it will be from any knobbly tire. But there's no real discernible vibrations, and when you're cornering and when you're cruising at speed, there's no real instability. I don't know how Michelin have achieved it, but they've done really well with these. So, for the last few minutes, I've banged on about how great the Michelin Tracker is. And it's worth noting, I don't work on any level of commission. I'm not selling these tires. If you buy from the link below, it'll take you to eBay. Um, I've got no affiliation whatsoever with the brand uh, or the tire. I just really like them, but they do have one drawback. 
and that is probably for the first 100, 150 miles, they really track the imperfections in the road. And I can't figure it. I don't know if it's the molding process during manufacturing. Maybe they make the peak of the tire that little bit more crowned. I don't really know. But after about 150 miles, they start feeling really, really normal. But before that, you find the slightest um, seam of tarmac on the road from a road repair or similar, and they can really want to steer your bike. And it was really off-putting. So if you are gonna buy these tires, just be really mindful of that. But also have a little bit of confidence that that actually disappears relatively quickly. Like I said, about 100 to 150 miles. Now, one of the most important aspects of any tire are the wear rates. And it's probably the most important fact that you're looking from from this update. These tires have got around about 4,000 miles worth of wear on them. And they're doing really, really well. I'm only just now thinking about swapping out the rear tire. And truth be told, it's probably got another 500 miles in it. The front, on the other hand, shows no real discernible wear. And of course it has worn. But I can't really tell it if I'm quite honest with you. It's holding up really well. And you'd expect that from a front to a back, no doubt, on a, on a bike. Now, I guess the last point to talk about is the price of these tires. Because when I fitted them a year ago, I bought a 110 118 for the rear and a 1990 21 for the front. And I think I paid around about 120 pounds for the pair. Now, having tracked the prices, pun intended, over the year, I have seen those prices go down. And that's really great news because this time round, I'm only looking at replacing the rear and I know I can pick one up for around about 50 pounds. And that's really, really affordable. And it's also, a it's also a point to think about when you're comparing it to other tires. Because looking around the internet, I can find a comparable size mitres, for example, at around about 80 to 85 pounds. You might get a little bit more longevity out of it, but at 25 to 30 pounds extra per tire than the tracker, it doesn't make any sense to me. I might as well get slightly less mileage out of this one, but pay considerably less. Even if I end up replacing this mid-season, I'm probably still going to get more bang for my buck out of the year. So I shall be sticking with the tracker, that's for a fact. And in fact, I know a lot of my friends who have ridden other brands have been so impressed with the trackers, they're now riding them or trying them as well. And I think that says a lot. When people can see how effective the Michelin tracker is, they swap over as well. They're a fantastic tyre at such an affordable price point and with such good wear rate considering all the factors. I shall certainly be fitting these again. I don't see any reason to move away from them with this particular bike. If you've liked this video, please consider subscribing. If you've fitted Michelin trackers either to a CRF 250 or another bike, put your comments below and let us know how you've got on with the tires. It helps the community, as we mentioned in the previous video that garnered around about 80 comments or so, people helping out, um, letting them know how they've got on with trackers. So please do the same to this video. Um, help everybody else read in the comments. I know a lot of people find that really useful. Anyway, until next time, stay safe. We'll see you on the trails.